I'm delighted to introduce our next panel, which is going to be talking exactly about that. So um, hosting the panel, uh, we have Ed Mayo from Pilot Light. Uh, taking part in the panel, we have Anne Campbell um, from Barclays uh, IT. We have uh, Maddie Hutchison from Morgan Stanley. We have Michael Von U from the Scottish Tech Army. And I've just lost my notes to find out. I'm, uh, probably I've definitely missed somebody else, but my notes have disappeared off the screen. Ed will definitely fill in the last blank. So please give a warm welcome to the, your panel who are going to discuss Tech for Good volunteering. <laughs> Thank you so much, and I'd like you to big it up for the, the She's Not Forgotten by the panel, Anne Campbell from Barclays. Anne Campbell. Thank you so much. Well, we are now together in person, but we have only been on screen so far, and we believe that the conversation that we are having is fundamental to the future of the Tech for Good movement, which is fundamental in so many ways to the future of society and the economy. So we want to have this conversation between us, with you, uh, those of us here present in Glasgow, and those of us on screen as well. Uh, I am Ed Mayo from Pilot Light. Uh, Pilot Light is a pro bono charity. And in the research that we have done, we find that six million people across the UK are using their occupational or professional skills to support charities, pro bono action in that way. And that's an amazing number. But we also know that there are further three million people who would like to do so. And what are the obstacles? Typically, actually, it's they don't know whether their employer, the business, uh, supports them to do so, or it's not easy to find the opportunity to make that uh, kind of work. It is a diverse group. Um, people of colour are more than twice as represented in uh, the skill volunteering field uh, as in the, uh, the population uh, at large. And working with uh, the Scottish Tech Army, which has been a joy, but also 30 or so other organisations working in the pro bono field, including uh, Inspiring Scotland, Elaine and Tommy here uh, today. Uh, we've been uh, looking at the scale of skill volunteering across the economy, tech sector but beyond. And what we find is that there are around 8,300 charities that are benefiting from people with skills coming in and making a difference in so many ways to people who are vulnerable and uh, in need. In our own work at Pilot Light, uh, for the, uh, the longer programs that we run, the Pilot Light 360 program, uh, Les, you'll remember that, uh, 10 months, we find that two years on from those pro bono support programs, charities have been able to increase their reach, the number of beneficiaries they serve, by 30%. And, and that's a figure that we're very proud of. And increase their income as well by uh, 44%. Uh, and one example, um, kind of briefly, is the Coventry Women's Refuge, uh, CRASAC, we've been working with, with a team from Barclays, uh, supporting them. They were working with the local university where allegations of rape had been uh, set aside and ignored and working with the university to try and address that challenge of sexual violence. You know that one in seven uh, people who suffer from rape are, do not feel as if their case will be listened to or, um, or resolved. Uh, Coventry, Crassac support 8,000 people a year. That includes women uh, and men. And men, when men have suffered from this, and I don't want to be triggering, um, they can blame themselves because they feel that they ought to have been stronger, ought to be able to put it off. From that work with the university, the team from Barclays were asked, could the charity set this up as a trading enterprise, social enterprise, in order to accredit institutions around sexual violence? A brilliant concept, primary purpose, and the result was yes, and the charity is now moving ahead to set that up as a service, and that may be something that's taken up by domestic violence charities uh, right across the uh, the UK. So, where are the business benefits? This is the fun side of it, because we know that there are benefits to charities, there are benefits to society, but what we're also finding is that you give and you get back. 
And uh, I've called this give your, the idea of giving your culture a workout. And working out is a way to use your workplace skills, but also to flex and develop them and learn in the process. Uh, we're working, for example, with Sodexo, with the Insurance uh, Mutual, Wesleyan, around leadership development, recognizing that actually when you rise within the ranks, you may not have access or exposure to people with very different lived experiences. And some of those soft skills can actually be quite hard to achieve. Uh, empathy, listening skills, uh, influencing skills, understanding multi complex, multi-stakeholder situations, all the skills that you need in a leadership context. But also curiosity, and I think curiosity is one of my favorite ones, that actually you're being asked in taking on pro bono work, uh, whether it's through the Scottish Tech Army or, or more widely across the pro bono field, you'll be asked to problem solve. And increasingly, with the pace of change in technology, but also the pace of change it, with a climate emergency, with inequalities in society, with mental ill health, we need to solve problems faster. If there's one quality and skill and competence that's needed in business, it is curiosity and problem solving. Often in a business setting, it can be hard to be curious. Targets, objectives kind of crowd out that. And working out, engaging in pro bono activity, uh, is a way of stepping into a, a safe space in which you can be curious uh, and you can test and develop those, uh, those skills. So that's a way of introduction to the uh, team. Um, I've now forgotten which order we were going to go in, and I had given it to you. Uh, Fiona, we're going to start with you. Thank you, Michael. You see teamwork at play uh, at, at the moment. So Fiona, thank you very much to you. Yes, no problem. Good afternoon or good morning, everybody. It feels like afternoon. That tells you what time I get up at in the day. Um, firstly, thank you so much to Alistair and all of the team at the Scottish Tech Army for having us along. Uh, I would like to, I guess, tell you a little bit about and, and our, our group background, but then I really want to come on and talk about and in the club that I run, because I think when we talk about skilled, skilled volu volunteering, it's very easy to think as medium-sized businesses, as, as large-scale businesses, oh, it, must, it must be easy for you. So what I'd, what I'd like to do is root this story in, in my small club in Edinburgh and, um, and tell you a little bit about how we've developed and how we've placed skilled volunteering very much at the heart of what we're doing in that, in that business. So, I, so I was, I'm a club exec in, in Edinburgh for AND, and we are a digital consultancy, so we help businesses and organizations solve their problems through whether it's data, design, or, or tech itself. And there's three things that are really, really important to us at AND. That's our people, our clients, and the community. So it's a bit of a no-brainer that when we develop the business model at an AND level, that, that skilled vol volunteering sat at the heart of that. And so as part of AND, we have just under 3,000 business days in the UK that we dedicate to, to skilled vo volunteering. And that means our Andes can choose wherever, you know, whatever and wherever they're passionate, they can invest their time um, helping, helping charities. Outside of that, every club in AND then gets to choose one charity to support and help on a kind of longer term basis. Um, and I think we heard earlier, again, just trying to present both sides of the, the coin, that there are challenges to that too, because inevitably your help can ebb and flow. And also from a charity side of things, their availability can ebb and flow too. So, so then looking, I guess, more specifically at Grace, when we launched Club Grace at Avan Digital in Edinburgh in June, we had seven people and one client. And we got the team together and said, right team, as we carve out this vision for our club, what type of work do you want to do? What's important to you? Um, and this very much stemming from the fact that we know how hard it is to retrain, uh, retain technical talent. So let's do something that we're all passionate about. And they said, unanimously, Fee, we want to work on stuff that gives back. We want to work with brands and companies that have a level of purpose and recognize their place in the ecosystem of the world. 
And you might say, well, that sounds ambitious, but good luck doing that. Um, and I think it's this whole thing around, you know, a principle isn't a principle unless it costs you something. So, so that's what we set out to do in June. And the first thing we did was have a conversation with the Scottish Tech Army to say, right, this is kind of where our mindset is. Can you partner with us and help us find like-minded organizations who we can give back to as we establish, as we build our brand, um, and as we, I guess, build our business? So yeah, we were totally chuffed to be the first private sector organization to, to partner with STA. And it's amazing to sit here in Barclays and think now they have such phenomenal support. It is unbelievable. And as a Scot, super, super chuffed uh, and proud of all the work that the team have done. So then I guess moving on, thinking about, okay, well, what are, Fee, what are the benefits that, you know, that your club receive from, from the skilled volunteering? Well, in talking to the team, the first thing, I guess the first thing they call out is challenge. Because often when you put together a small team to work on something, it's, it's quite different work and they might be stretching outside their comfort zone. So for example, a developer might be stretching into a bit of client management um, and vice versa, a, a client person might be trying to upskill in some other area. So, so for our Andes, um, they, they take great reward and great great passion in the work that they do with the partners that we work with through the STA. From my perspective, um, currently Grace has the lowest sort of staff turnover, Andy turnover uh, in, the, in the UK. I, I genuinely believe that's because we've set up a club that has a very clear purpose and our people are motivated by the work that we're doing. And so now we're 56 people with four clients and we're constantly driving to find clients and partners like Heineken, for example, Heineken UK, who are like-minded, who, who also want to give back, who have written strategies, their evergreen, evergreen strategy that very much plays into this area around volunteering, sustainability, and doing the right thing um, for the world in which we all live. So I couldn't recommend skilled volunteering enough, uh, and thank you very much for having me again. Thank you, Fiona. <laughs> or Fee, or, yeah. and, or, or Andy. <laughs> yeah. And um, we pass to, to you, Michael, who've been closely involved in the work of the Scottish Tech Army. Hi, everybody. I'm the head of applications of the Scottish Tech Army. So I have the, the great joy of working with new and shiny toys all the time. So that is something that all of you inner geeks with me will feel that it, it's, it's a great opportunity. And this is an opportunity that <clears throat> is one of many of the, the benefits we have of skilled volunteering, where as we can do is see different platform, different tools available that volunteers might not have access within their own organizations. And let's be honest, a lot of the people that are full-time work, they're not necessarily gonna sit down after work and start doing research on what possibly could I do, what tool is there out there to help my organization or my job to be easier. That in itself is almost a full-time job. So we do provide access to the latest and greatest and the stable. We don't quite go leading edge, we do, do a lot of cutting edge. So it is one of the many benefits. So we can't necessarily funnel this all down into all this, enumerate three benefits and that's what everybody gets. But. We get to see, depending on the organization and depending on the, the volunteer, is we get to see their passions. We get to see them grow. We get them see, they get to pick up new uh, skill sets that will help them in their career. In some opportunities, we help on the induction. So we will get new members of the organization and the skilled volunteering will help with a big part of their getting familiar with the tools getting familiar with what's required of them, what's expected of them, and effectively gives them a leg up. We've had feedback from some of our volunteers that, you know, after I volunteered, I flew through my probation. I didn't have to think at all. And this is great for the volunteer, but it's also great for the company, because there is a cost associated in training every new volunteer, every new employee. So we, we can uh, provide support for this provide familiarization and guidance on this, as well as don't underestimate the boost in self-esteem and confidence that comes 
when you come in right off the gate and start working on a project and you have tangible results. Because ultimately, you will, be a, you will have more exposure to the end product than you would in almost any other scenario. If you're part of a large, or large organization, you will be doing your skill set and most likely your skill set only. Whereas once you start volunteering, we're not going to have super massive teams. We're going to have a handful of teams with small, pe well, small teams with a handful of people. Sorry about that. Uh, but this allows everybody to, to explore something new, explore something different, and more importantly, understand the whole picture. Because that's something that is missing a lot of times when, when you are just focused in your own task. You lose perspective. And this allows every volunteer to see what is really going on in an organization, why they're doing what they're doing. And it's the why that truly does help a lot of people and allows them to, you know, finally it'll, it'll put that missing piece and understand, oh, this is why I do this and they do that because we're trying to achieve this. And as I said, not necessarily only one benefit, there's many of them. But it is ultimately the growth, the personal growth of all the volunteers because it, it pushes them out of their comfort zone. You know, we, there's some people that are natively want to push, grow, and expand, but there's a lot of people that like just settle down in, in their comfort and not really go out of there. And we help them give them a slight little nudge to see what else is out there. And it's always a good experience. We never had somebody, oh, no, no, I learned something I didn't want to learn. It's like, how dare you fill my brain? It has pushed something useful in. But <laughs> so it, it, is, it, it is ultimately, it helps them grow their skills, grow their passions, and then see, you know what? What I did helped somebody. I gave somebody access that gave them something that they would have never ever been able to have. One of the, the talks we always have on DSDA when we have new volunteers, sometimes it's simple things that the volunteer might not appreciate their skill set that it is as big as it is. They say, oh, I only know how to do website. Okay, if you only know how to do website, websites, that's a skill that a lot of people don't have, especially when we deal with smaller charities. You know, a website is their gateway to the world. And it's, it goes from the conversation and goes, oh, it's a website. It's like, no, it's a website that changes lives. It's something that has a tangible effect on hundreds of people that you would have never been able to help before. And that's why we highly recommend to come and volunteer, everybody. So how many sign-ups are we going to see today? <laughs> Thank you so much, Michael. That's fabulous. Uh, and for those of you online, actually, we've got a fabulous uh, audience in person here on the banks of the Clyde in Glasgow. And I will be coming. We won't have a lot of time, but it's just comments or questions that are there. But equally, if you're online, you can get... I don't know whether anybody still uses Twitter, such that is the tech sector moving fast. But the hashtag uh, TFG Summit 23... Uh, you can find that off the Scottish Tech Army, Scott Tech Army uh, uh, kind of tag on Twitter. But put up your thoughts, put up your questions. Uh, we'll try and pick up those as, as we go. We're now moving further on the panel uh, to Anne. Over to you. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. Um, so I work for the wealth technology team here in the Glasgow campus. And um, we support the wealth business for the uh, niche clients that we have for the products in the, in the um, uh, marketplace, such as Smart Investor. Um, we are in the situation in um, wealth technology that we went through a huge um, recruitment drive last year. Now, this was in line with a lot of industry uh, activity. It feels like uh, we were in a very hot market last year. Um, just to give you some context, we took on 100 people um, over the, the uh, 12 months, and that is approximately half of our current workforce. To give you the um, further uh, context, we have a huge commitment to early careers um, and we have uh, graduates, apprentices and uh, the uh, importance of that uh, um, is that we have a pipeline of talent that we really want to tap into. Um, so in the time that I've worked for Wealth Technology, um, 
things have changed a lot. Um, when I started, there was probably the um, culture of uh, a line of um, developers sitting silently in a row of desks with their headphones in, <laughs> um, not talking to each other until something broke, and then it would be a panic and... Um, we would try and resolve it. Uh, the way we're working now uh, is a very much more agile way of working and things like the campus that we have here uh, to be able to support that is really important to us. Um, in the time that we've been um, uh, working in uh, the tech teams, also the way we have um, supported the citizenship agenda here in Scotland has changed. Um, for every time that anyone has mentioned the um, a wall for painting purposes for a charity to be seen to be doing good, in one of the local schools that we were at, the mural on the side of the playground actually had the logo of a very large auditing company on it, which felt to me a bit... Uh, um, uh, wrong. <laughs> so when we've been talking about the benefits to the uh, company that we have from the um, people that we have uh, in the uh, support that we've been able to give, uh, we have moved from those kind of um, um, more general uh, opportunities to this very much more skilled um, way of uh, contributing. So we've got things like Code Playground. This is where we have um, some of our individuals who will go out to local schools to show the children how to program. Uh, having done this myself, I can tell you that a 10-year-old will take the laptop off you quite quickly and say, I'll show you how to do that. So it's definitely something that we want to tap into as we continue to support the local community. In terms of the uh, support that we've been able to give the Scottish Tech Army, we were so fortunate to be um, a, a approached because of our CIO's um, connection with the work that was done by uh, JP Morgan um, and the Tech for Good that he had experienced meant that this was absolutely something that we wanted to support. Um, we were really um, a, a, a able to tap into um, the expertise that we have within the, the team. That We had a lead developer who was able to uh, really um, come up with solutions. When you're talking, Mike, about the, the challenges, I think uh, the lockdown environment that we have in Barclays is something that we find incredibly challenging. And I'm sure in a lot of other companies, this would be something you would uh, identify the opportunity that we had to go in uh, to the Eagle Lab and use the gaming um, uh, setup that is in there, which is unlocked, was phenomenal. Now, I don't know if uh, Andy is in the audience today. He was going to join us. Um, uh, he was able to uh, circumnavigate the issues that we had by using things like um, his uh, um, experience in the creating the environment that, that we needed to um, have for the really fundamental aspects of communication uh, with the charity, Lower Impact Living, and we have Sarah with us here today. So I think, Sarah, it's fair to say that we had uh, several times when we had to pause and explain technical terminology and just make sure you were on the journey with us. Um, this is something that we absolutely take for granted, I think, in the language of how we operate in technology. And it's something that we found in terms of the benefits back to our people, really fundamental. Just being able to look at how um, we uh, just stop taking these things for granted and just have that uh, understanding of the importance of inclusion for people to be on the journey with us. Um, and it's something that we found, as I say, from the um, enthusiasm and uh, expertise that the, uh, the more experienced members of the team had, that is um, quite organic in terms of how that then influences the younger members of the team, the early careers, the the people who have the, why would we not be able to do that? But, you know, just the um, uh, ability for them to be uh, uh, as a part of the team. 
stepping up to that next level is really important for us as well. So it, for, for us, it, it was an incredibly successful pilot. Um, we were thrilled with the response that we had from the charity, and uh, it's something that we definitely want to, to develop on further. Thank you so much, Anne. And we have uh, a panel session this afternoon looking more closely at skills-based volunteering and the, the impact of charities. But it's quite nice, Sarah, if you were willing just to hear from you about uh, your experience of this. Um, I'm sorry if online we go off screen as I pass the microphone, but just very briefly, um, what difference did it make to you, that pilot? Ed's gone rogue. <laughs> <laughs> off script. Um, no, it's, it's been a fantastic experience for us. I think a lot of the things that Rodri was talking about in terms of limits of, of funding, of capability, of understanding, uh, for us, that's blatantly not our background. We're an environmental organisation. Um, it's been great to have our hands held by the STA, but by Barclays too. The team has been invaluable in, in teaching us, you know, being willing to, for us to put our hands up and go, now you're going to have to explain that acronym. I've no idea what you're talking about. Um, it, it's, it's been great. We've grown in experience and confidence, not those things that were, that were spoken about. We would not be able to do what we're doing without this support um, that you know fundamentally that's where it sits thanks so much Sarah a another aspect that we have from uh, our volunteering um, is our digital uh, champions within the digital legal space uh, and again this is something that uh, we have a um, real understanding of what we know, others may not know, so it's just having that baseline view of, of just bringing everyone together. Thank you, Anne and Sarah. And now we're going to pass... Thank you. Now we're going to pass to, to Maddie, and uh, I think uh, Michael, Fee, Anne and I were very excited that you join this uh, panel. Uh, Maddie, she comes with... Uh, a kind of stellar reputation from your work at JP Morgan, but you're now at Morgan Stanley uh, leading the Tech for Good uh, kind of work. So, Maddie, over to you. Thank you, Ed. And hi, everyone. Really excited to be here. Um, kind of hard to go last after these awesome tidbits that were shared um, by my fellow panelists. But um, as Ed mentioned, I am the new, very new, um, head of tech philanthropy at Morgan Stanley. I've only been in the job for about 50 days, so um, still very much listening and learning, um, but really excited to be here today. Prior to my role at Morgan Stanley, I spent seven of my 10 years at JP Morgan helping to build our Tech for Good programming there. So while I'm new to Morgan Stanley and the work we are doing, I'm not new to this space at all. And I definitely deem myself a skilled volunteerism enthusiast. Um, so really excited to be on this panel. I also should mention that I'm pitching to the board of Morgan Stanley in just two weeks on why these programs are good for business. So this panel is my dry run um, to that presentation that will take place. Um, when I think about why these programs are important, um, I kind of see skilled volunteerism as a win-win-win. Um, so we've talked a lot earlier about the win that these programs can be um, for nonprofits and adopting technology. Obviously, as was mentioned earlier, there's a lack of skill set sometime and um, investment and, and resources for um, technology in the social sector and the nonprofit sector. So these these types of tech for good programming and skilled volunteerism opportunities can be a great way for them to get access to tech. Um, I won't go on that too much because I, I do think that we, we've covered it um, before, but obviously it's a great way to help move the needle in terms of tech adoption across that space. Secondly, as a lot of my panelists, um, fellow panelists mentioned, uh, this is a, a great opportunity and win for employees who engage in these types of programs. So um, skills-based volunteerism is not just an opportunity for them to give their tech skills, but also learn new things along the way. And it's not just new technologies or, or processes, but um, I think for a lot of our technologists, they're not involved um, day to day in end to end project development at large corporations. So working on skilled volunteerism projects, being able to be involved from the ideation phase all the way through delivery and kind of handover and training is a really cool opportunity for employees. It also gives a lot of our technologists the opportunity to see um, 
a, a client facing role, which a lot of them may have internal clients, but don't necessarily have that external exposure. And then also helps build the community amongst um, the, the volunteers who are participating who probably don't work together um, day to day. So it's a great way for them to network and build, build their skills. But the third win, and the one I really wanna focus on, is the win for the companies as a whole. So especially from my side, coming from um, a large corporation, um, I think for these skilled volunteers and programs, it's a way for us as employers to one, promote that um, opportunity for our employees to engage, and that we've seen has um, tremendously helped in building culture, especially in a post-pandemic world um, where we hired a lot of new employees, people were obviously at home for many years, so being able to, to be together and creating that. We also see it as a win for business in terms of how we can continue to deep, deep invest in the communities where we work and operate. So it's really an awesome story when we can say we helped had local volunteers helping local organizations um, and being able to have that additional touch point um, with those organizations rather than just giving money or going to paint at a school um, like we talked about earlier. So I think it's a really cool opportunity for us to go deeper. It's also been an interesting opportunity to showcase the impact that um, skilled volunteerism has on our workforce as a whole in terms of talent development and retention um, and also talent attraction. So we use a lot of our Tech for Good programs as an opportunity to get in front of university students and kids um, and be able to really build the brand of Morgan Stanley um, as a tech employer of choice. So I think that piece is, is an added benefit that people don't always recognize or realize. Um, it's not why we do these programs, but it's definitely something that's been helpful. And lastly, I think, you know, in, in some previous examples at JP Morgan, we've been able to, to actually build business um, off of these engagements. So where we worked with charities before and were able to deliver great solutions, it actually um, in turn uh, meant that they moved their, their business um, to the firm as a whole. So again, that's not a reason that we were necessarily doing this, but a great win for me when pitching to the board as to why this is important. Um, because we, we usually aren't seen um, in this space as, as helping on you know, the bottom line, but in these cases, we actually have been. And I think that in our, our employees engaging and being able to find that sense of purpose, um, again, just builds that, that sense of inclusion um, at the organization and really helps us continue to, to position ourselves as um, technology um, leaders and employers. So I think a lot of those reasons are why organizations continue to, to invest in these types of programs. Um, and I, I'll just mention, lastly, um, you know, this is a space that we can't be competitive in as competitors. So I love what the Tech for Good Alliance is doing and bringing these players together. Um, it's really important that we all continue um, to do these programs at our organizations, but that we continue to collaborate and share best practices. And at Morgan Stanley, we really see this as a space that we're not competitive in. So even with our traditional competitors um, on the street or across the tech industry, um, this is where we want to share and learn from each each other and find ways to, to go deeper because that's really when we'll move the needle in terms of tech adoption for good. So um, definitely open to conversations and continuing uh, to, to share best practices um, across the space. Thank you so much, Maddie, and you've done a, a wonderful <laughs> summary and synthesis of the business benefits there. And I think if we could turn the nine minutes that we've got into a focus group to support you with that pitch to your board and your collaborative so that others can take it to their boards as well, we will be having the Tech for Good uh, Alliance in very good shape in short uh, kind of order. Thanks so much for the um, comments that we've had through from online. Good for the organizations needing support. Great for the volunteers too, for example. Uh, do you have any questions? Uh, for the, uh, the, the, the panel. Yes, that's in the most difficult place for the microphone, but I'm gonna pass you, <coughs> no, I think for online. Hi, uh, Tom from um, NatWest. Uh, thanks very much to Barclays for hosting today. Um, another example of non-competitive behavior. Um, <laughs> I was just gonna ask, uh, you know, it all sounds, uh, and I've, feel this in my role as well, it, you know, you kind of very, we are very focused on 
the no-brainerness of it. And I'm just interested, particularly when you're pitching to boards, for example, what, what pushback, what possible reasons not to do, are you hearing? I think, and I'm happy to start, um, I think one of the, the biggest challenges that, that we find is just how they can the employees can dedicate the time to this. So I think it's really important to build constructs on how employees can do this during their working week. Like this shouldn't be something that employees are expected to do outside of their their day-to-day -day work, you know, after work on the weekends. That's great and that's passion, but if employers really want to invest in this, I think um, finding that time while at work. And that's where I get a lot of pushback um, from the boards. Um, I think you know there's a lot of priorities, and we do have a business to run. And so I think um, being able to again pitch that these types of programs and initiatives actually make our employees stronger and the workforce stronger, um, and allowing them to do this at work will will help bring those skills back to the workforce. Um, I think. Those are kind of what I usually rebuttal the, the challenges with, but I definitely think the employee time um, and investment is one of the things I hear. The other that I think is interesting, um, especially coming from the financial services sector into this kind of tech for good space is we don't have products to donate right to, to organizations. And so a lot of times there's a misunderstanding of what we could do and, and um, the impact that we can make. And I think, again, if you think about skilled volunteerism, the, the general knowledge of skill sets and technology development is what we can give back. Um, and it, we're very product agnostic, if you will, in, in what we build. And I think, again, that helps bring the employees um, uh, a sense of learning and, and understanding of what new technologies are. So I think for, for the most part, those are it. Obviously, always like funding and budget um, questions as well. But, but yeah, that's what I see. Completely agree. And I think one of the key things from the retention perspective that we've had, the costs of hiring somebody new, if you lose somebody, uh, are so um, high that the, the more we can do to make our colleagues feel that they are giving back, that they are contributing, that it, it is being supported, exactly as you say, from a corporate um, perspective. We have five development days per year um, incorporated into our um, working years and it's definitely one of those things where if you described the um, contributions to supporting a project through the Scottish Tech Army as you are getting an opportunity to develop yourself being able to take those um, uh, additional risks with what you're doing just being able to, to participate in that way is really really valuable but yeah the, the money the money is definitely the, the one that we would add, uh, add. Yeah, if, if I could add to that, I agree with everything that's been said, and I think it's a brilliant question, because when you were chatting, Maddie, I was thinking, what are the board going to say to you? <laughs> and I was kind of scenario planning it in my head. And I think, to me, it comes down to, it's a fundamental mindset thing, because either, either you are a visionary business who's thinking long-term about growth, and progression and attracting the right talent, or you're a short-term organization or business who's focused on numbers, short-term numbers, and uh, inevitably, I know which side of the fence and you know which, which type of company I would rather be in and back. So I think for the visionary boards who can see what the future is, then they're, they're already doing this. For the companies that are struggling to do it, I understand why, um, commercially. But equally, as, as I was saying, in, in the case of my small business in Edinburgh, uh, you've got to, a principal doesn't, you know, a principal isn't a principal unless it costs you something. So you've got to invest in something you believe in and something that you think will attract talent, will motivate talent, will get the best talent and will help fundamentally um, the communities which, which we live, which, yeah, is a much bigger purpose. I think there's something to be said about for this to work properly, it needs full support from every level in the organization. Because it's good that we are getting volunteer days, but we need them respected as well. It, it needs to be something that's set in the same priority level as everything else. And I know it's easy to say, especially because, well, you know, I'm not in, in the corporate sector, but it is something where 
what we're giving back is so important that it, it, it needs to be taken into account and given the time that it was promised. And it, it's not even more time. It's, if we say three days, make it three days and have everybody respect the three days. Don't make it be like, uh, can I work on this? No, no, you need to work on the other thing. So it, it, it needs to come. It's a top-down uh, company philosophy. Thank you so much. And thank you, Tom, for that question, uh, which was, uh, was, was a great one. Um, if I pointed to one thing in addition to, to, to what our panel have added, it's um, that increasingly we find at Pilot Light that we are, uh, we've always talked to the teams that lead on ESG and corporate social responsibility because it's about giving back, making a difference to charities and society. But increasingly, actually, we're building the business case through the leads on talent development and learning and development. And so we're working, for example, with Sodexo that I mentioned, and their, their engagement in pro bono is tied to a very clear set of learning and development outcomes that attract are in, and in line with what the company is trying to build at different levels. I mean, we've worked with Morgan Stanley graduates and we've worked with, you know, kind of very senior levels and, you know, these things are all different. But I think the learning and development field is a really exciting area for us to prove the business case. And often it means taking it from where you started, Fee, which was, this is a point of principle. Actually, if you're, based, if you're starting with your values, not everything has to be turned into pound, shilling, and pence. Actually, if you're led by your values, you're doing this because it's the right thing. But in giving back, you are also getting back, and there is a real case uh, that is there. So that's an exciting one, I think, uh, to, uh, to, to watch. So I want to thank the, uh, the panel uh, very much for uh, kind of building a rich picture uh, of the benefits. The benefits to the charities, and Sarah, thank you for joining our panel briefly uh, on, uh, on that. Um, but the benefits to the individual taking part, that ability to, uh, to play a different space, learning new skills, the project management was uh, one example, curiosity, I talked about problem solving as well. But above all also the wider benefits that people bring back to their workplace and their business. And I think as you were saying, Anne, you know, this is, uh, this is a new workplace. You know, we, we're still getting used to what it means to be working in hybrid ways. And how do you sustain and nurture uh, those water cooler moments, those points at which the culture comes together and people make a connection? And doing something good through pro bono action is certainly a way uh, to, to do that. I want to thank the panel members, pass back over. I also want to just give a personal shout out to a very special uh, kind of person we heard from Alistair uh, with that inspiring opener. I, I just want to give a shout out to Kirsty, the Scottish Tech Army, for all the collaboration that you have given us at Pilot Light and the wider, uh, those of us more widely working in the pro bono space. So with that, uh, thank you to the panel and we pass back over for the next agenda item. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, thank you to the panel. Fantastic discussion. Uh, a round of applause once again for Michael from the Scottish Tech Army, Fiona from And Digital Grace Club, Maddie, and good luck with the pitch from Morgan Stanley, and from Barclays, and of course, Ed from Pilot Light. Round of applause. <laughs>